close your eyes and stay with your breath, all the way in, all the way out, all the way in the spaces between. You want to make your awareness continuous so that you can see connections. When you do something, you want to stay with your awareness in the present until you see that it gives results. Then you know what caused what. You begin to get a better understanding of how your actions really do shape your experience of the world. Because it's not the case that we're simply on the receiving end of sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, ideas. We go out looking for them, and looking for them we shape them. It's like those people who try to find a partner and they'll take whatever they can find and then say, well, I'll just turn this person into somebody else, the person I want. That's what we do all the time with our engagement of the world. Sometimes we do it skillfully, sometimes not. And you want to observe yourself in action so you can see when it's skillful, when it's not. And that requires that your attention be continuous. So stay here as consistently as you can. Make this a good place to stay, both comfortable and interesting. Comfortable in the sense that different kinds of breathing will feel right for the body to bring it into balance. Relaxing when you're tense, energizing when you're tired. Soothing when you're frazzled. And also in the sense that it's really interesting to see the effect that the breath can have on the body and the mind. As you allow the breath energy to flow to different places in the body, wherever there are pains, think of the breath flowing right through it. Whether there's a sense of blockage, don't think of it being a solid part of the body. Think of it as being just blocked breath, stagnant breath. And what do you do with stagnant breath? You provide outlets for it to move. So in this way it gets interesting to stay here, and you learn a lot. One of the images that the Buddha gives to the practice is a mirror. You're looking at yourself in a mirror. Actions are your mirror. And that's where you get to understand your mind and get some control over it, because we're not here just to watch things coming and going. When the Buddha talks about having penetrative knowledge of arising and passing away, the emphasis is on the penetrative. In other words, you're not just passively seeing things coming and going. It's in the course of making decisions in your life as you practice virtue, as you practice concentration, that you want to see what sorts of things are skillful and which sorts of things are not. That kind of knowledge is penetrative, so we're active in our engagement in the world. So we have to learn how to be more skillful in our engagement, more skillful in our actions. That's when our insights really do bear fruit.